Welcome to the Spiritual Transformation Podcast. I'm your host, Mary Beth, and I am the founder of Day One Life Coaching. For those of you who don't know me, I started this podcast as a way to talk to amazing guests like the one I have today. She is a spiritual leader, a spiritual healer, we can call her, a spiritual teacher. Um, Coach Jules, welcome to the show. I'm going to tell the audience a little bit about you, but I wanted to say hello and thank you so much for stepping in today. We weren't going to have you till April, but divine, divine timing, you know, the universe wanted you here sooner. Exactly. And which is going to go with the universe. Thank you for having me here. I'm so happy to be with you, with your energy and your personality. Talk about some favorite subjects of mine, like abundance and spirituality and love and success, all of it. <laughs> all of it. And let's give a shout out to Yasna because she literally like just introduced us. She knew we would be a good energetic match. And I, I think last week we, I just met you last week and I didn't think I'd get to have you on my show for a long time. And I'm so happy that we get to do this earlier. So you yeah. guys coach Jules, she's a holistic success coach. So she is going to be the one who will help you create your joyous path to success. Um, she's going to also help you increase your self-worth and your self-love. What a beautiful career. Um, how did you get into this? What's your background? Have you always been spiritual? That was a lot of questions I'm throwing at you. <laughs> yes. Um, let's decipher them all. Yeah. Um, have I always been spiritual? Um, yes. Yeah, speaking about the divine. So I guess, yes, I was following my path. And my path was opening up the doors to consciousness or to other way of thinking, to other way of being, or perhaps because of my curiosity for something different, I was more open to see and then just kind of followed my path, like started to read some books. But I would say probably my first introduction to spirituality or that's something different and especially self-love started mm -hmm. from louise hay teachings and louise hay yes yeah. i love louise hay yeah so yeah i remember that's when it started and i know i was following one of her guidelines <laughs> when you have to stand in front of the mirror and say i love myself <laughs> Which feels awkward for people at first, but it shouldn't yeah. feel awkward. We need to make sure people know, you guys, it should feel good. It should feel normal to say, I love myself. So if you stand in front of the mirror and you cringe to say that, we it's okay, but we've got some healing to do, right? Yeah. Well, in just that uh, word, should, is already a key or the opportunity to do some healing. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're here and what we do here for people who are shooting themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we are showing them the way that it could be done. And again, paying attention to that, I should could be your gift that you can give yourself if you want to look at it as a gift. Yeah. I and yes, um, I absolutely agree with you when I was standing in front of the mirror and saying that. <laughs> It was very awkward. And in the beginning, it came with a lot of tears. Mm. But this is, I guess, just facing that uncomfortable. And then that was the moment for me to hold that safe space for myself to receive my tears. So, yeah. I love that. I sense an accent. I already know where you're from, but tell the viewers where you're from. And when did you... When did you come to the United States? You live close to me now. Yes, I know. <laughs> like 30 minutes away. I know. We're going to hang out. Yes. So I love it. So when you just like expand, other people, like-minded people <laughs> come closer, right? Yeah. Amazing. Um, so yes, I'm from Moscow, Russia, mm -hmm. and I came to the U.S. 25 years ago. Nice. So yeah, I am basically American. <laughs> I love it. So um, Jules... Uh, what, what were you like as a child, like growing up in Moscow? Like, was it, tell me a little bit about your childhood. Was it an easy life or, and why did you come to the United States? Well, was it an easy life? In comparison, um, I guess, to in here. In comparison, I would say that I was a um, mature child. <laughs> 
And I don't know if it was just like people say you were born with a mature old soul. Yeah. Maybe because things were very challenging and I became a mature child. I don't know which one came first. Right. Um, but yeah, so I wouldn't say it was easy, but in a way kind of was easy because when I was growing up, we were still in that socialistic, communistic re regime, which what it means, um, we did not have as much comparison. Oh, yeah. The, rest of the world. And when that was removed and you could not compare yourself how it could be or should be or some other way, then essentially like it makes it kind of easy. But there were other, you know, obstacles. And I was still in Russia when um, things were happening the other direction <laughs> right and started to compare and things were opening up to other countries other possibilities and then we're like oh <laughs> like you can live like that <laughs> so just kind of like those moments of discombobulation I guess and, and awareness just becoming aware that yeah. there are other avenues <laughs> there are yeah. other ways of living yes exactly so yeah like it Expand your mind. Time. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. So we let's talk about some of our favorite subjects. Yes, okay? let's do it. Yes. Let's talk about the law of attraction. Mm -hmm. You know, I love I, I love teaching the law of attraction. That's one of my favorite things when I get a one-on-one -on -one client who's into it and wants to learn. Nothing makes me more excited because it's so fun, right? And I'm passionate about it. I could talk about it all day, every day. So if there's like a few things, like one or two things even that like our main messages that you want to make sure anyone w understands about the law of attraction, what would the main things be that you want to make sure that they actually get like that, that a lot of people might misinterpret? Yes, I believe that when I was in the beginning of learning about the law of attraction i was seeing it from a different perspective than i am now and i guess the difference is that i understand that we don't actually attract what we want but we attract who we are so and that is probably one of the most recent corrections so to speak that i've um, created in the in my understanding of law of attraction so that's why so if we are all energy and I'm energy and we're attracting similar energy, similar frequency, because that's how it is. It's the frequency match. So then I need to be that who is ready to receive what I want. Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful opportunity for me to grow, but also understand the universal laws and the energy like the law of attraction so when you understand that it helps me to learn how to expand and be that version who is going to receive those desires that i am essentially creating because that's what it's all about it's about creating yeah and you have to step into that version so that's probably my like uh, recent mm -hmm. lesson like within a couple of years that I understand law of attraction like that. So and I'd love to know your um, opinion on that. And then the second one that I just recently learned, uh, and that is a, the law of assumption. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like the law of assumption now has to be prerequisite before the law of attraction. Because I think in the past, how I was using it, and I believe that's like a lot of people see it like that, um, and that's how it, it is. Like some people say like law of attraction, like you have to be positive all the time and you have to like think only positive thoughts and all of this and all of that. Right. And then it becomes like, oh, I'm not positive. Like I have to punish myself. Oh, I'm not like a cancel, cancel and, that and thought. Yeah. And it just becomes like this, you know, guilt and shame and all of that. And that's how I think I was approaching law of attraction back then, like a few years ago. So now I don't look at it like this. And what helped me also get there is understanding the law of assumption. Because 
like essentially you want to assume that what you want is already available to you. Mm-hmm. And the way I see it through the law of attraction, law of assumption and doing law of resonance, right? <laughs> Resonating that energy. I look at it, what I want is coming towards me and who I need to become to receive that is going towards that. And we're both working together. Mm-hmm. This is just my assumption that it's already done. It's already exists. And more I grow, close I become to what I am creating and manifesting by using the laws. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. So tell me, how do you see law of attraction? (laughs) Well, yeah, I agree with everything you said. And I also used to be one of those um, positive vibes only person initially back in 2006 when I first learned about it. Yeah, you get scared to think a bad thought because then you learn Wow. And for people who are new to this, I should say that the law of attraction is basically a universal law based on the fact that everything is energy and we're always attracting and it doesn't only work for the good stuff. We're we're also we're just always manifesting. There's no way to turn this off. So it's great to learn how to use it deliberately instead of by default. Right. Like you call it a creative um, a conscious creator, I think is what I saw you call it on your website, which is perfect. And so a deliberate creator, um, no, like on purpose. So before we're aware of this law, we're just kind of like all over the place, not realizing how much control we actually have on the way our day goes every single day. We can set ourselves up for success and, you know, keep going up. We could downward spiral too. Like, and, and it, it doesn't mean we're not allowed to have negative thoughts. And I used to do the same thing, being scared, trying to suck my thoughts back up and cancel them out and delete, delete, delete all of that stuff because you get scared because then you realize how, how important our thoughts are, but not only our thoughts, even more so our feelings. And I think that one, knowing how important that our emotions are because vibration is truly through our emotions. So we could say things and if we don't believe it, we can only really attract within our personal belief system, right? So we have to, we have to create new beliefs. And a lot of that is through the law of assumption, like you said, because we assuming or just expecting this is going to happen, you know, like that's, that gets us closer. And a lot of it's just reprogramming our mind Mm -hmm. towards the positive, because we've definitely, most of us think a lot of negative thoughts every day, and we can change that we can reprogram through neuroplasticity is a real thing. We have the ability to change these programs going on in our minds. You know, we've basically been hypnotized, right? Since we were children. So then that gives us all like a vibrational set point, a point of attraction, and then we can shift that. And that's what I love to teach people how to do. And also to your point about, um, you were saying that we attract what we are. I think some a uh, huge epiphany that I had, and I've said this before, but it's worth repeating, is that we attract anything that we have an energetic spark with. So mm-hmm. I think that's the same thing you're saying in just a different way. So mm-hmm. if we have some sort of strong feeling about anything, even if it's a judgment, we're attracting that exact thing that we don't wanna be attracting. So if we're judging people who are liars and cheaters, And then we're like, why am I attracting liars and cheaters? I'm not a liar and cheater. I'm, you know, because because we judge it and anything we focus on gets bigger energetically. So that's like the the, like really things that took me. They were like those missing, like something's missing because I'm not this way, but I'm attracting it. So it's not only we attract what we are, we attract anything we have this energetic spark with Mm -hmm. any strong thing that we're focusing on we're going to draw it towards us. And, you know, it's all, and I always call worrying negative prayer. When we worry (laughs) about something, you might as well be praying for it to happen because we want to not focus on that, but don't be mad at yourself. If you catch yourself worrying, I'm a worrier too. It's just about catching yourself and gently redirecting and, and, and choosing better feeling thoughts. Yes, exactly. And I think that's where um, consciousness comes because what is consciousness? It's just being awake. And that's the question, what are you awake to? Mm-hmm. And to me, when we become aware and awake, hopefully we're awake to that inner dialogue and inner thoughts that we have, that narrative that almost you know comes from when we were five years old, 10 years old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And when we're awake to that, and we're also awake to the feelings that that narrative brings, that will be the moment, that conscious moment, that awakening for me to say, okay, is it mine? Then it's my responsibility to deal with it. Because most of the time when we react at somebody or something, it's not about anybody in that moment. It's most likely that story that we just bring it. Mm -hmm. And like we do it by default, then it's just constantly happening. Like that's what was happening with me like all the time. <laughs> so like if my husband says something, but I have that void or like I'm not good enough is there. So like his words, if you put it down, he did not say anything about me not being good enough, but my story came up too. <laughs> and here I am <laughs> again, reacting it. <laughs> but now with my awakening, I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> mine and if I'm going to project on him mm -hmm. it's only going to go into fight and the conflict and then we don't talk <laughs> exactly and like, so that's I think the um how I see that conscious whatever like we can call it spiritual but I believe spirituality based in, in that on that conscious awakening and I believe that consciousness only has ability to expand like in my view it's like I'm opening up a door to the next level of consciousness it's mm -hmm. like oh I'm awake to this now well like I take this course so I talk to this client or I talk to you in a podcast and you said something and it's just suddenly my consciousness expanded to see something else it is like next door and you know I have that curious personality and it feels to me like I am this um who is that Willie in the chocolate factory you know <laughs> oh, is oh yeah you know? <laughs> it's the same Willie Willy yeah. Wonka. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to remember this. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I didn't grow up on that, but I'm familiar with that character. And that just like always feels to me like I'm, you know, in this chocolate factory opening the next door, because um, I believe through this awakening, like how you were talking about it, it's an empowering view to see that oh, I'm the energy, my energy consists of my thoughts and my emotions. And when I am receiving the same old saying, <laughs> like those cheaters and jealous people and whatever, now it's a reflection back to me, right? Oh, like, what is my actual story? What is my narrative? What am I focused on even just what is my focus? You know, like people yeah. don't realize what we focus on gets bigger. So you got to be careful what you're focusing on because unless you want it to get bigger you know you want to focus on the good stuff don't focus on the lack and something you said earlier like with the consciousness and the way yeah just self-awareness is the first step in healing anything self-awareness you have to have that first because unless you're aware of what you're doing and thinking and your narratives that's a perfect way of saying it this the, the little negative loops that we have going on over in our head we got to become aware of that before we can change it otherwise it's subconscious which means we're not aware of it. So we can't change it. And then something else you said was really good, like re regarding your husband. Um, yeah, I always tell my clients like, because a lot of times we just can't even see ourselves It's the hardest thing for us to see is ourselves. And those like you talked about responding versus reacting instead of having a knee jerk reaction, just taking really it's so important to take that time to just really reflect and instead of project, like you said, and being triggered is almost always like just a, it just simply don't get mad at yourself when when you get triggered we all get triggered don't go down a shame spiral about it just just examine it and be like mm, it, that's interesting where does that come from because all triggers are you guys is just it's just um indicators you know a little flashlight showing you hey, there's a little bit of work you need to do here still. There's something that you need to heal and that's okay. And you know, we all have those. Like I still have them and I, I love that I can quickly identify them these days because practice, practice, practice. All of this is, gets easier. It's kind of, in, initially it's a little difficult, right? Like um, when we first start doing this and becoming aware, it feels overwhelming. But I assure everybody listening that this does get easier. It just becomes part of your daily life and your daily routine. Yeah, yeah it becomes uh, um, actually who you are. That's why I believe, especially in the beginning stages, it's very, very beneficial to have coaching support or any kind of support so that 
you don't just get stuck in the same loop or start yeah. blaming yourself from another angle. And that becomes, you know, another story. That's why having um, a coach who can help you see, and like you said, um, put a flashlight on you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, because <laughs> we can't see sometimes, like, I'll be talking to someone even, and they're like, did you hear what you just said? And that happens constantly with my clients because I'm like, okay, listen to the way you're talking. Like, I, you can, this is your story. This is your story you're telling yourself. It's not the truth. You know, so, you know, we got to, and then suddenly, like you said, their consciousness is expanded. Like they never heard it. You know, it's hard for us to hear ourselves, but another person can hear you rather well, right? So yeah, then yeah. you point that out. And once your consciousness is expanded, you don't go back. You can't unexpand your mind. <laughs> it's too late. Now you know you got to deal do something about it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so what yeah. do you feel is um what do you feel is like the biggest block of people's success? I named this about, you know, claim your abundance now or something like that, because we're you you teach people how to be more abundant and more successful. And what do you think? What do you find is blocking people more than anything else from their own creating their own abundance and success? Um. Well, like we already talked about it. So and this is just their own mind, but it's not even that. I think you also mentioned that when you were talking and, and that's that by default, because I believe we are wired for safety and protection and our subconscious mind loves to protect, mm-hmm. except it does it sometimes in a wicked way. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when we start understanding the power of subconscious and that it's wishes us well and protecting us from something, then it's almost like you just have to practice to be like this nurturing adult, yeah. your subconscious five-year-old Jules, who is still like trying to abandon <laughs> herself in order to be loved by her parents and whatever. Right? So that's why just understanding that we are wired for seeing kind of negative and for protecting and preventing. And that's the safety response. This is just a survival. This is like a the ego. Life. Yeah. Yeah. And ego is not bad. It's just like how healthy it is and how integrated it is because ego, you know, teaches us when we're open to learn, just mm-hmm. like you were saying before. So that's why, yes, I believe that, when we start understanding that we are spirit first and foremost, and then mind and body, and then in the spirit, we are always whole. Just like when we came into life and that baby was a whole baby, right? But it was just dependent on the parents and all of that. That's why the wholeness is where we came from, like the womb and all of that process, the divine intervention, you know, uh, it's always available. It's always been there. Mm -hmm. But then when we grow and when we start going into that protective mode and we become, yes, a little bit more ego driven and going by default because we always create, but we create by default. So we just kind of like move away from wholeness because essentially in society, we need to fit in. We need to belong. We need to be accepted. We need to be loved because this is like human needs. And this is where that protection happens. But then again, like when you are on the spiritual journey or conscious journey, whatever you want to call it, and then we start understanding like, oh, I'm actually disconnected from my wholeness. And that's why you can even start noticing, like you mentioned in the language of the people, because the ego likes to speak and very white and black. So like it's either good or bad or right or wrong. Do I need to make a wrong decision or right decision? Am I perfect? Am I not perfect? Then this is ego that basically splits us and disconnects us from the wholeness. But then through this awakening, hopefully we start moving towards the middle. It's where that plus and minus kind of overlap. Like I always imagine the two circles, mm-hmm. like ego plus, ego minus. But then we start awake, start to be more awake. Then we're bringing those two circles in the middle, which we're getting closer to that wholeness who we already are. And in that wholeness, there is a different language, there is different feelings, there is different um, energy that lives, and that speaks more from the language of love, faith, 
trust, intuition, creativity, imagination. And you can see even just those words, mm -hmm. they're not plus or minus, the whole, the representation of whole, mm -hmm. which essentially we are allowing ourselves to connect to our divine creation of who we are and that divine representation. And then it becomes that dance of essence and ego, ego and essence. Like that's how I see myself like constantly dancing <laughs> and inviting both of them to be as they are. And then just understanding, am I coming from the essence? And in my essence, I'm always abundant. Because when you ask that to connect with your faith, love, intuition, this is abundance. This is inner abundance. Mm -hmm. And then when you understand that this is who you already are and you're just simply reclaiming that through your process of conscious awareness and spiritual growth, then that's it. Like you might be acting like you are creating some success, but you're actually creating from your inner abundance of who you are already. Mm -hmm. So that's why that reclaiming, it's almost like your new rebirth like, oh, I'm here to actually like let my soul do its job. And I'm just the body for the soul. And in that soul, I am the essence. I'm already that whole. And more I come back to it, more I embody that within myself, more I show up in life. Like I'm still ambitious because like that's what sometimes I see People go into like the extremes. Oh, now I'm spiritual. I'm doing yoga every time and I don't need anything. No, spiritual okay. bypassing. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay to desire things like yeah. that is fine. But when it comes from your already inner abundance, the energy is different. Mm. And again, I'm not projecting my insecurities, my not enoughness or whatever. I'm coming and I'm like, I'm a gift. I'm here to contribute. And how do I do that? Well, th first of all, from my own desires. And second of all, like, if I'm here to contribute and I'm a gift, I'm here to serve. Yeah. From my wholeness. Like, I don't need you as my client to prove how great I am. Like, that's my job. <laughs> that's right. something that I'm working on and embodying because it is my wound. Because coming from not good enough. So I am constantly searching for significance. And in the past, that was very much prevalent. Like if my client does not say, oh, that's been like a profound session today, then I'll go <laughs> to like, oh, I didn't do a good job. <laughs> but but now since I've been doing my work, like I don't get triggered if I didn't have the words of, you know, reclamation. <laughs> right, right. So I'm like, that's okay. I'm going to trust the divine and it's their journey. And I believe I did good. And it's not that I'm saying I never get the feedback. So I always listen and I decide with myself, like, yeah, that makes sense. And I better, you know, improve my skills or my abilities, but it doesn't have anything to do with who I am. Yeah. But it always has to do with, I can always learn more. I can always improve some skills. I can always add more knowledge. I can always like create new tools or whatever. Mm -hmm. But who I am, I'm whole. And the other part of this understanding and awareness is when you come from this perspective, you actually can access one of your most amazing and abundant gifts. Yeah. Which <laughs> is a gift of creative imagination mm. and resources. Because in this state, you're expanded, you're open. But like when the ego starts going, you can tr contract and you're tense and you're protecting again. And guess what? In that state, that being creative and imagine something different becomes impossible. But this is, I believe, one of the abundant gifts given to us by the creator who created all of this. <laughs> right. Which is the power of imagination. And that's like how I always teach my clients is that we create from the spirit of abundance. So first we insource that within, and then we come and create from that place. And when that happens, when that shift happens, when they embody that, so they create miracles. Yeah. 
So, and, and that's what I believe. We are all here to create miracles. <laughs> because yeah, we are miraculous cre creations <laughs> just to begin with. I believe that too. And you had, I took a few notes because you said so many, you had so many little wonderful little nuggets of information in there. And, and I too, I agree with all that, like this disconnection that we have that, you know, before we kind of are aware of that word disconnect, but we weren't, we're the only ones connecting ourselves, disconnecting ourselves. And I believe it's through um, uh, limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs create that, you know, self-worth issue which you know then it kind of feeds on feeds on it and you get the insecurities like you said and then you feel like you're not good enough and and i think that's the the number i'm going to say with my clients the number one limiting belief that i see is that they believe in a lot of this stuff but they believe other people can do it but they can't and that's mm -hmm. just self-worth you know and so that's a huge that's a huge thing to to reprogram you know, other people can do it, but I can't do it. You know, they have something more than I do. There's something I want, but I can't have, or I'm not worthy, all that kind of thing. Um, and, and, and really reprogramming our minds, because like I said earlier, we really can only create within our personal belief system. So if we don't believe we're worthy, that's where we need to start. Like that's the baseline <laughs> because yeah. we're all worthy and we got to reconnect to our source right and and get back to those the, the truth and the truth is that we are like you said we're all whole we're spiritual beings having a human experience and we don't need anyone to complete us you know we want to be complete and 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 we create our own happiness and then when we do find, meet somebody you know we're already complete hopefully and we don't expect them to make us happy or make us feel certain ways because then we have that stuff you said earlier the projection the knee-jerk reactions all over the place and then it can become a, a you know inadvertently not on purpose unintentionally a toxic relationship because we haven't worked on these things and i think that's why the dating world such a kind of crazy disaster right now is because so many people haven't really done this work and I encourage anyone who's struggling with um, dating and they, they feel like they're just, it's just toxic and, and the environment is, you know, do some personal development work, hire a coach, hire a dating coach. I, I help with relationships too. And that's because, and that's what I keep seeing over and over again is people assume everybody's like this and, and they only focus on the stuff that's going on that they don't want. And guess what? Like we said earlier, yeah, that's why that. you keep getting it because you're like all women are like this or all men are like this and okay there you go as you wish mm -hmm. your wish is my command that's what the universe is, show is showing you what you believe so mm -hmm. we we got to change our beliefs that's the key that's the key <laughs> yes well and also um worthiness is really a product of the mind or the human creation like worthiness does not exist mm -hmm. in my view and i, I agree that spirit and soul, because if we apply worthiness to the nature, because we talk about universal laws and the nature is designed in its perfect and harmony, right? So we have rain, we have snow, like right now in Ohio, it's pretty gloomy and gray oh. and rainy, right? And we have those days as humans, except that we have that mind which says, oh, you're not worthy. Mm. So if we look at nature, can we say, like, well, okay, today is just not worthy to live. <laughs> it's gray, gloomy, and rainy, right? That's why I love, like, other laws of the universe, like the law of rhythm, mm -hmm. helps me see that everything is in motion and mm -hmm. everything is a flow. The ebb and flow is okay. Yeah. It's okay. We can't yeah. expect every day to be a yeah. perfect high-vibing day. Yeah. Feel your yeah, feelings. Exactly. It's good to feel feelings. Yeah. That's why I can stay and name it whatever I want and create friction, or I can go and enjoy the rain from, thank God, inside or outside. I mean, I have a house, right? So, but um, my dog and I went outside and walked and caught a little bit of rain and came and changed the clothes and that's okay, right? So that's why... The law of rhythm and the nature, how it's designed, you know, we have earthquakes and we have whatever snow and other, but then earth still rebounds us 
and mm-hmm. goes back. So, and really our job is to, again, notice and ask yourself, you know, help me see it differently. Like that's my prayer. So when I go into like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now enough of that, you know, God, whatever universe, help me see this differently. And that's that abundance mindset, I believe, because I love Marion Williamson quote, and she said, the key to abundance is um, see, is seeing the world with unlimited thought. Mm, yeah. And that's what it's all about. But again, when you're set on lack and you're set on that default and what you don't want, you're not exactly not in abundance thought. But when you start, again, accessing your creativity, because that's where that unlimited thought comes, then you start seeing it. Oh, it's raining today. Like, oh, that's a perfect opportunity for me to like sit by the fireplace and read a book. I love (laughs) that. Yeah, that's true. We can just change our perspective and, and we can't we can't find a solution when we're focused on the problem at the end of the day it's about shifting your shifting your focus shifting your perception of what's going on because there's a gift in everything there really is like i i can honestly say like you know i haven't had a perfect life by any means i had a lot of stuff (laughs) but i always learn more in the hard times like I, i i don't learn much at all when my you know when everything's easy and flowing perfectly, that's not, that's not the places in life where you're learning a lot and growing a lot and expanding a lot. We expand and grow. Like I wouldn't take any of the negative things back that's that have happened in my life. Negative is just a label, but you know what I mean? Like things that wouldn't, you wouldn't like sign up for would that wouldn't be my preference. Maybe we can call it contrast. I wouldn't take any of it back because all of it made me who I am today. And I feel like all of the hard times, put me in a position to where I can help people through the same difficult times. Right. And so I, I wanted to ask you about this. I saw something, I, I know you have no idea any of these questions I'm asking you. No. I'm just throwing them at you last minute, but I know you got this. And I saw something on your website that wanted, made me want to ask you to t- um, talk a little bit about feeling the need to hustle versus flowing and allowing. And, and, you know, and I'm talking about, anything to do, like anything we're trying to attract, you know, it could be money, it could be a relationship. And like, you know, let's talk about, you know, like that feeling of where we got to hustle and really force things to happen or versus the the vibration, the energy of the flow kind of, that's like your, the ebb and flow rhythm you were talking about made me think this is a good question to go to next. Well, first of all, um, I love that you explored my website. <laughs> of course. <laughs> That's beautiful when um, we do the homework, right? <laughs> and also more to talk about for sure. Yes, this is my oh, passionate subject to talk about because I definitely come from that hustle culture. And I think we already said a lot about worthiness and um, not enoughness. And I think that's where it all starts from. That's why in the past, Everything I was doing had the energy of proving my worth and pro- proving my enoughness and proving my brilliance because I was not giving that to myself. Mm. Essentially, all of that, these are inner perceptual problems. And when they're inner perceptual, <laughs> there is no amount of money, success, accomplishments is going to fix that because this is all outer stuff. And this is, again, going back to claiming, embodying, and understanding that all of that is within me. So, and that's when I started to train myself my nervous system first of all because my oh yeah was attached to the concept i am busy so i had a lot of labels i am busy i'm type a um i'm hard to relax i am goal oriented i am determined i am go getter and of course it was a part of the culture but also being an immigrant and i came to this country to like make a business and you know i did so like my husband and i we own the franchise and that was a part of my american dream which also brought me to ask myself like what do i want and that's how i kind of like got onto that spiritual path that started mm-hmm. with the body 
and then um, catching up with the mind and making a full circle. So that's why, that's why where consciousness starts. So like watch all your words that you say, I am, because that becomes that. <laughs> right. You're, you're in, I tell people that all the time, you are in creation mode when you say I am, and then whatever yeah. you, word you say after that, you're creating that in your reality. So really make sure something good comes after yeah. I am. <laughs> make it good. Yeah. Exactly. Because this you're is a very it. powerful and important um, two words. And I know I learned um, them in yoga. So I'm a you know yoga devotee and an instructor and all of that. And I remember in yoga, they were emphasizing quite a bit but I don't think I was quite awake to receive it. Mm -hmm. So but now I understand this more because I am, that means I am consciousness. Like I am is your consciousness is what you're awake to. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, like my list of, I am uh, busy and all of that, that already tells you <laughs> I was awake to working hard because of course my belief was if I'm working hard, then I'm good, then I'm enough, then I'm worthy. And if I, you know, got this, got this, got that, oh, I'm worthy of having it because also in our culture, it's very much praise, like it's a noble thing to do. And then I can like sit, oh, and now I deserve to relax because look what I, you know, created here, but what it cost me, that's another subject, right? So I was burning out. I was stressed out. I was never satisfied. I was constantly going. I wasn't really present. I wasn't um, present in my relationships. I wasn't present for myself. I didn't know who I was. I only knew I had to like check off the list. I need to set the next goal. I would like, you know, bring my work on vacation and all that because you're describing my my past as well. I, yeah. I I feel you on this. I and I used all those labels on myself when you were saying it. I was like, because yeah, you know, yes. like the type A and you know all that stuff, like the go getter and checking off the list, like you just said, like that. I mean, yeah. When we're always thinking about the, the next thing, the next thing, we're never in the present moment, and that's where all of our power is is in the present, and we're never here when we're when we're doing the type a i've got to go do this you know and it's it's yeah. it's it really we're we're disempowering ourselves is what we're doing exactly yeah and that's what like my clients when they say but and i when i ask them like well how do you want to feel i want to feel present mm -hmm. well guess what like being present it's a state of being you don't mm -hmm. need to do countless meditations and mindfulness and whatever what you want to do is to shift yeah your limiting beliefs your state of identity and guess what you can be present and still check off the list. You can be present and create success. You can be present and set the goals. Mm -hmm. The energy is different. Mm -hmm. And also, again, you're coming from the state of fullness and wholeness, which I'm not using that accomplishment to prove or disapprove who I am. And this is, again, your job to own and your job to embody because in the past, so like if something doesn't go my way, well, guess what? Now we have another label. I'm a failure. Yeah. I'm stupid. I am not successful. And then it goes into another story, right? Right. So now when something doesn't go my way, I don't make it about me. I'm just looking at it. Well, maybe it's not divine timing. Maybe I need to like work on my skills. Maybe I need to reach out to other people. Like, again, I'm looking at outer like, what is it that I can do? And it's in my control, but also at the same time, again, going back to my wholeness and like, okay, what if simply like what is teaching me is to strengthen my faith because faith is not something like you have it or you don't. Faith is applied. Like you actually want to recommit to faith. And that's what I tell people. Like, it's not about being committed for the rest of your life. No. That's not going to get you there. Mm -hmm. Like learn to recommit. That's a good point. It's not working out that your mind is not in the right place. Like you're not perfect. Like walk your doubt. That's what I always tell. Like, okay, you're doubting. Great. Celebration. Like pick up your dog and go for a walk. Walk your doubt. <laughs> it's okay to doubt. 
Isn't that right? Like, we we got to accept our emotions. And, and that's a really important point. I always like to insert it during any law of attraction talk is how important it is to feel your emotions. Don't ignore them. Don't suppress them. Don't deny them causes that causes all kinds of issues because those feelings are still there and all just see your feelings as an indication of where you are and then taking your next action. And, and then I want to add something that I think back in 2006 when I watched The Secret and I was like, this is what I've, cause I knew all of this. Like I, when I watched it, it was just putting a label on stuff that I noticed. Like I always noticed when I think and feel this, then this happens. When I think and feel this, like I noticed it, but no one knew what I was talking about. I would try to tell people. And then I was like, this is what I was talking about. So the Law of Attraction movie, The Secret, they don't place a lot of emphasis on taking action. And I, and that's great. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot of people got confused, but I still think it's a great introductory video. Um, on, you know, it's, it's, it's still a great video, but there, that is where they failed because we have to take action. We can't just, you know, like, you know, I've created a deck of cards, addiction recovery with the law of attraction. This deck of cards did not create itself. I was, I got the idea. I was, it was definitely divinely inspired because I received it because I was, I was high vibing and I was, my mind was not in chatter mode and that's the receiving mode. You guys, you, you know, give yourself that time to be in the present moment. I was walking my dog well, you know, and I was, it was sunny out that day and it was just a, not a care in the world. I was just not thinking for the first time ever. And then I received this idea, but I know when the idea is out there like that in the ethers, you better jump on it. You better take action because other people are getting that idea too. And hasn't that ever happened to you or anybody else who's watching where you get an idea, you don't act on it. And then someone else is doing it like a year later. You're like, darn it. That was my idea. No, it wasn't because you didn't own it. You didn't take that inspired action. So inspired action is so important and they don't talk about it enough in the introductory um things on law of attraction there is no law of attraction without taking action the universe loves action do you agree exactly. oh yes and that's how everything gets manifested and created because yeah. if you just sit in the dreamy space then nothing is on your meditation cushion yeah <laughs> comes to you. i believe that everything is created twice always and first it's in our mind and then it comes into reality so that's why with the law of assumption if that idea came to you so if you assume it came to you that means it already exists yes in vibrational exactly. form everything's in vibrational yeah. form before it's in physical form yeah and that frequency is already like there and then when you became aware so, and again, when you become aware, when your mind goes from black and white and go back to that middle, because that's where intuition lives. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. And then you're actually like receiving it because you are, like you said, quiet and silent and in that inspired um, vibrational energy. So everything just comes together. And then again, like that's where you practice your trust and your faith that I'm doing my work. And then for that, I want to use the law of harvesting. So that's my favorite law to kind of. Oh, talk get, about that. Talk about the law of harvesting. That perspective, because again, everything exists in the nature. So that's why we're striving for perfection. But essentially, when we look at the nature, is it really perfect? Yes. Except that we also have hurricanes, we have earthquakes, we have rain, we have snow, like essentially it's not perfect, but that's how we are as humans. That's why we have emotions. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's how we can see like basically the nature, how it goes and ebbs and flows. That's how emotions are. Yeah. But we suppress them like you were talking about. So that we create friction. And then essentially we're going against that law of rhythm because again, law of rhythm, everything is in flow. That's it. Like it's law of motion. But when we resist something, emotions or whatever situations, then it becomes that friction. And then we basically like we have a host with two ends. One end is holding it. Right, right. <laughs> and eventually that host becomes bigger, fuller, and that energy has to go somewhere. And a lot of times it goes into the body. And I follow this um, Hungarian uh psychologist psychiatrist whatever he is Gabor Mate 
Yes, I love, I love, yeah. love him. He talks he about trauma. Yeah, he has a great book that I'm reading right now. And it says that when the body says, no, when the, when the body says no, and that's his whole idea. So when the mind cannot say no, the body does, because like the energy has to go somewhere because oh, it yeah. cannot stay in that um, constricted position for a long time. So, but the low harvesting, going back to, again, perfect um, representation of nature, and that's my favorite one. And that's how I, a lot of times, uh, explain abundance to my clients. So, yeah, you might uh, relate to that. So, the law of harvesting, we put a seed. We put one seed, yes. <laughs> let's say seed of apple, right? But then if we do our work, like actions, right? And even like in the supreme universe, we go in the forest, we're not there, but you know, God, divine creation does the work because the rain is there for the purpose that seed grows. Then we have heat, we have cold, all of that, all of that for the purpose for the seeds to grow. But let's say we do conscious work, intentional growing in our garden. We put that one seed of apple and we do our work. Like we become gardeners. And like, I wasn't born to be a gardener. Well, this is where like I learned, oh, is it enough sunlight? Oh, is it enough water? Or is it enough fertilizer? Or maybe it's this fertilizer. And this is that ebb and flow because that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of uncertainty. But if you want to do something different, like uncertainty is your friend. And just like with that seed, I don't know how to grow an apple tree. But the beautiful part, when I do the work and create the environment and I am doing my little dance and, you know, a little bit of loving, a little bit of hating, a little bit of whatever frustration and everything in between uh, and read the books, then, you know, divine and my actions, right? All of that doesn't give me one apple. It give me a tree of hundreds of apples, Absolutely. When we work with the universe without the resistance, like I always say, like the universe always has a bigger, better plan than our mm -hmm. minds, our physical brains can come up with. So I always just like I'm open to all abundance in all ways, all different, yeah. all different ways, because there's stuff that I can't even think of that the universe has the path of least resistance to hand it to me, yeah. you know, so um, so we don't have to work hard, so we don't have to hustle. Um, and it's interesting because have you ever noticed that some of the crappiest jobs pay the least amount of money? And, and you know, and, and then there's a lot of people not working very hard, making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That's that's an energetic thing. And they always say that if if everybody was given the same amount of money, that it would always it would all come back to the same way that it is right now, because because it's energetic, this, the people who. Mm -hmm. People who were handed a hundred, if we all were given a hundred, hundred thousand dollars, people who are wealthy would turn that one hundred thousand dollars into billions. People who are who are not used to being wealthy, they have a lack mindset. They would be broke very quickly, and it's because of energetic, energetically. You know that's why there's lottery winners. You ever hear those stories of lottery winners? Like they're, there's broke, like like they win millions and millions and millions somehow they got they they just can't hold on to the money and i i, I do think it's energy well, yeah, but i believe that it still goes back to your consciousness because yes you, your set point like you were talking earlier is set on lack and mm -hmm. you know how to like live on hundred thousand let's say like you know what needs to happen when millions come into your life and you don't have enough time to adjust, this is that upper limit concept where your nervous system is just on fire and essentially you're self-sabotaging yourself yes. because you as a person, like going back to where we started, you have not changed. You're still coming with that limiting beliefs, which most likely like those people who lose those money, most likely they already have some limiting beliefs like I cannot trust money. Mm -hmm. money cannot trust me like if you listen to them before most likely they would be talking something like oh money always come and go or or this money's going to go so i'm going to spend it really fast because it's not going to stay yeah. so and i'm going to spend it really what? fast and then that's gone and then like people who are used and who trust in the flow of abundance they're going to they're going to invest they're going to they're going to let that money grow they're going to invest in a business they're going to do something that um will just yeah. be creating more and more and more and building on itself. 
Well, yeah, because it's again like that inner abundance is within you. Yes. And I'm sure you've met those people who might not be like multimillionaires, but you talk to them or you feel their energy and it's like, wow. And then you go to people who have like more than an average and you just like see how they like have coupons and count how many how much money they spend on laundry or whatever like it's just it's all goes back to consciousness mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that's why if you are working towards money then money is just again it's the energy and it's simply yes. a reflection of your limiting beliefs that's why I love coaching my entrepreneurs on money because it's like when you start doing the money work it's like there are so many triggers to come come up and so many, so many. Beliefs. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like amazing and suddenly um yeah all of it is just there and we just talked about the money because money is nothing but the stories in the energy we attach to it, that's what becomes that vibrational frequency. And a lot of times, like I see, there is a lot of self-sabotaging just because those limiting beliefs, like going back to my working hard, right? So um, when, I, I mean, I still have it, not to the degree that I used to. That's why I am constantly sabotaging like easy clients, because I believe that, you know, I have to work hard for money. Mm. But now being a coach, like it's a hard work, but in a different way, you know, it's kind of like yeah. hard, but not hard, right? I understand um, exactly what so, you mean. <laughs> yeah. And then I would sabotage myself because I would have this client. And like you say, I love like when clients want to learn about law of attraction, because that's something you can do, like talk about days and nights, right? And I have that client and we just have like this amazing conversation. And I get off the call and it's like I have a heart attack like oh I don't think I did good it was like too easy yeah yeah it's, it's so fun when myself. you're passionate it doesn't feel like work but also but when you have the intention of helping people you know anyone who's watching this who's trying to create a, abundance one of the secrets one of the laws it, I don't know what's if it's an actual law but I but I do know this is how it works I don't know what the law would be called but by the way I have a 72 page um universal laws typed oh, up there's so many universal laws yes, yes. so um but this one of them is basically if you have the intention of serving others it's almost impossible to not be abundant because you know it's okay to love money it's okay to want abundance but what is your intention is your intention to help people or you just is it out of greed you know mm -hmm. like because you're going to be a money magnet when you're in, in, in intention, when you set the intention to actually serve others. And then you're also serving others, doing what you love. That's a magic combo right there. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's, it's my a, cat. basically giving and receiving because there is a lot like that. Or um, also um, basically the whole principle is that if you help other people get what you want, there is just no other way you're going to get what you want. So yeah, and if we want, yes, abundance and um, prosperity and health and all of that, feeling good. So, and that's what coaching does. So that's that gift. And when people do the work and they stick with it, <laughs> they like we said before they create all, their own miracles and yes. i just sit there and witness and only say well i'm blessed to be the conduit of this work that allows me to become a better version of myself but also make that as my profession and also use everything that i get triggered in the sessions as my gifts <laughs> and essentially like allowing myself to again receive it as a gift and not like it has to be that hard work because we had this amazing profound conversation and that was just so easy but again listening to my body I know okay that's just my old story and that's my limiting belief mm -hmm. um, that is ingrained that it has to be hard but like going back to what you said like a lot of people make like millions and they work but it's a different hard work. <laughs> like mm -hmm. the actions need to be done. But again, what energy? So going back to that, I am busy. But I think what may be interesting to point out 
I don't know if you have um, reflection on that. So what I started to experience when I go to the world of like uh, where I used to be more like mm -hmm. that sort of a victim like, like the old energy the victim yeah, yeah victim yeah, mode like the government like like where things are happening people. to me instead of yeah. happening for me yes like you know government increased the prices and this yeah. and whatever like yeah. so go to that world and um i become in a way a little bit of unrelatable because i speak different language and i see differently like for example going to busy right so they would be like, oh, you must be like so busy. Like I see you online, you do this and you do that. And you go, I'm like, no, I'm not busy. Mm -hmm. But is there anything else you need? Can I help you? Like, oh, how come you're not busy? Or like the question like, oh, so like how much are you doing? Or, you know, that busyness. And I would just say, well, actually, I prioritize my time. I have time for fun and joy and meeting friends and all of that. And they just like, look at me like I speak a different language because before I would say, oh, I'm busy. Like, okay, we know what to do. <laughs> and now I just could like feel this pause. Oh, like what? <laughs> so, or just like situations like that or um, some, some kind of doubt or something that I'm working on, I might just say like, well, I, I actually, I'm trusting the universe. Like I'm trusting the divine that, it's going to come when it's going to come. Yes. I see like this a little bit of pause, like, like there's a little bit of discomfort. Like, I don't know what she's saying. <laughs> alignment instead of hustling, like no more hustling, yeah. get into alignment and everything will, you, you end up putting yourself in a situation when you're in alignment, mind, body, soul, which is the definition of holistic, which is what you do as a holistic mm -hmm. success coach. When you get into that sort of alignment, then you attract things to you. You attract the right people at the right time. You find yourself in the perfect situations. It's it's divinely coordinated and synchronicities, yeah. synchronicities. Yeah. I love synchronicities. Yeah, I definitely, yes. I have way more people who are on the other side than I have, like, so to speak, normal conversations. But then once in a while, I kind of get into that world. And this is like one way it shows me like my growth. And what I don't resonate with, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I see a little bit of that level of like being unrelatable because I almost, I almost don't accept like their point of view, but at the same time, I'm not there to convince or reconvince, right? Because like, well, this is just, we can only be an example to people, honestly, because, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the only way to teach people. They're going to see you and be like wow, I want what she has, you know, she's got, you know, like, I want to enjoy my job and, and make money effortlessly and in, in the flow of alignment, as opposed to hustling, you know, like, so that's all you can do. And the right people will, will find us, you know, the, the right people will be attracted to, you know, the, they'll see the energy, if nothing else, and be like, I want that. That's for me. How do I, how do I get how do I get there? You know, and, and then there's the people who don't understand us and they think we're speaking a different language, like you said, and there, and, and it's, you know, our old versions of ourselves. So we can remember being that way. Right. Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're on a different frequency. And I don't think there's anything that we can do to have certain people hear us and that's okay. You know, they're mm -hmm. on a different journey, but the people who are meant to understand this frequency will be tuning in to this podcast and they will get it. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like the radio station thing. You can't hear yeah. anything on FM if you're tuned into AM. You're, they're just not tuned into our frequency. And we don't want to be tuned back into the old frequency. We can understand it. Mm -hmm. We can remember. Oh, yeah, I remember I used to think that way. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So, yes. So, yeah, we're going to continue uh, honing our newer frequency and expanding from that to more. I love it. So we're about out of time. I would love for you to tell the viewers, I'm also going to put all of Coach Jules information in the description box on YouTube. Um, anywhere this is posted, check the comments, check everywhere. It's different on different platforms, but I'm going to have her links where you can find her. She, like I said, she's a holistic, holistic success coach. That's a 
that's a tongue twister. So, um, anyway, so if you're, uh, you, you coach mostly women, right? It looked like from what I was looking at. Yeah. So she coaches mostly women who, um, are entrepreneurs or looking to become entrepreneurs, looking to be successful in an effortless way. If you, you know, she's going to help you with your self-worth, she's going to help you with your self-love. So that's when you want to contact coach Jules for that. Me, I'm a little bit different. I'm a spiritual life coach day one life coaching.com is where you find me i teach law of attraction i help people with addictions and addictions are like kind of even overthinking and negative thinking you know i help people kind of reprogram to get back to to live their optimal lives whether it be happiness or fitness you know I, all that and relationships relation toxic relationships jules those are the biggest addictions that i come across Whew. like yeah. like more than alcohol these days you know it used to be alcohol and now i'm just like constant people who are in codependent toxic relationships. So if, if you're in something like that, that's that's more the type of stuff I do. Mm -hmm. And Jules, I want to thank you so much for your time. Where can people find you for the ones who can't find the link? Well, so I'm on Instagram and this is Jules underscore coaching. So this is J-E-W-E-L-S, like Jewel Brush a Stone. That's what it really means. And um, I'm also, I have a website. So it's jewelcoaching.com. And I'm sure Mary Beth is going to link my profile yep. on Instagram and make a collaboration post or whatever. So you're going to find me there probably most likely. Yes. And I also want to tell you that I love your name because this is how I always see like the transition from one day becomes day one. Mm -hmm. or day one becomes oh yeah i see what you're saying yeah like, day one, one or one day, day. Well, one day i'll do this so yep. one day i'll hire a coach that's on my business coach. card actually on my business card it says day one or one day like you know you decide you get to decide uh, is it going to yeah, be one day yeah. let's make today yeah. your day one your day one is today yeah. like because day exactly. one um, the reason i picked that name for my business there's a day one for everything whether it's breaking an old habit an addiction yeah or starting something new and, and just being like, all right, today's the day that I'm yeah. going to start my day one to live my optimal life. You know, a lot, a lot of my um, clients are, are, are badasses and yeah. they just want to do that level up. And it's just, sometimes it's easy to get stuck. That's all it is. And that's what coaching's about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's different than therapy. Coaching's more about, you know, we're helping you, we're, we're guides, everybody self heals and we just guide you and, and set, help you set the goals and, you know, we've been there, done that. So it's like taking a quantum leap instead of baby steps. It's moving forward instead of staying in the past. Getting, yes. And your so negative loop. Why, yes. Um, yes. Um, so I guess just allow yourself to move from your dreaming state of one day to actually make a decision. And that's what makes it day one. I love and it. That's your new life. Yes. That's why I like your name because <laughs> I have it in my head from one day to day one. <laughs> I love it. Yes. And um, guys, if you like this podcast, if you're into spiritual teachers, spiritual healing, I have people who are psychic, people who can channel, people who've had amazing spiritual transformations and like they like to tell their stories about their spiritual journey. All of that's on this podcast of spiritually transformative experiences, near death experiences too. I have some of those people. So if you're into that stuff, if that's your cup of tea, please go ahead and hit subscribe. Or, and if it's not, and you know someone, please share this episode with them share the podcast and if you know any any women who are looking for um, a coach to help them start their business or make their business more profitable coach jules is for you thank you yes. jules so much for your time thank you so much for having me and also sharing your wisdom it's always awesome to line up with like-minded women who are making the difference in this world because that's how we can get better and the world gets better one person at a time one day at a time i love it and i knew we were going to have an easy we had no preparation last minute and i'm like this is going to be fine because we are we are so like-minded yeah so i wasn't even worried about it and i really don't prepare for any of these anyway so <laughs> it's always just a conversation yeah. But yeah, this is just practicing divine intervention and um, trusting that what we have to say is going to reach the people who are meant to hear. Yeah. Trusting the universe. I love it. Well, thank yeah. you again, Jules. And we're going to say bye to the viewers. Thank you. Bye.